So these days you pretty much have to assume that your information is gonna be stolen at some point, whether it's your login credentials on some website where it had its database breach, and then you have to go and change your passwords if you were reusing them, which you shouldn't be, or maybe if you had like your credit card stolen, a lot of us have been through that where you get some random charge, then you gotta get a new one, change the number on all your accounts that are auto renewing, it's a real pain. But there is another way, and today we're gonna be taking a look at a couple websites that I personally have been using for a while that do solve a lot of these problems. Specifically, these are privacy.com and Blur. You might have heard of them, maybe you haven't, and I will point out this is not a sponsored video, I do just genuinely use these programs. The first of these, privacy Privacy.com is probably my favorite. I've been using it for several years now. And the basic idea is it allows you to create virtual credit cards or virtual debit cards that you can use on a website and so you don't have to use your main credit card, but it's much more than that. So how it works is say you go on some website, you're gonna order something or you're subscribing to some service and you don't quite trust it for whatever reason. This way, instead of using your main card, you can use privacy.com to generate a new unique virtual card to use on that site instead. So it'll look the same as any other credit card, virtually obviously a little picture of it, with a full credit card number, the security code, expiration date, the whole thing. But there is more to it than you might initially think. So you can create one of two different types of virtual cards. The first is a merchant card and the other is a burner card. Now the burner card is pretty self-explanatory. It's a single use card. So if you use it on the site, then it can't be used again. This is obviously really good for a website that you know you're probably not gonna buy anything from ever again, or you're just generally skeptical of it in the first place. And you can also set a spend limit on it. So if you're worried about them like overcharging you or something like that, you can say, I want the spend limit to be like just above what they're saying they're gonna charge you. So if they try to charge you more, they can't. And then after the charge is made on the card, it automatically closes the card two minutes after the first charge. So even if someone else tries to use it or steal it, then it's obviously useless. Then the other type of card is called a merchant card. And this one's really cool. It basically makes it so you can only charge the card from the same merchant that made the first charge on the card. So it can only be used at one place. So even if you do use that card somewhere and it gets stolen and someone tries to use it somewhere else, it won't work because it's not from that same uh, original charger. And you'll be able to see if someone stole it because you'll get a notification that there was a declined charge somewhere else. And if you know, oh, well, I only use this card at this website, well, it must've been stolen from there. And then you can disable it. You can also set spend limits on this one too in different ways. So you can have one that's a per charge maximum spend limit. You can also have one for maximum monthly, yearly, or total. So this is really good if you're worried about the merchant like overcharging you somehow or whatever. And of course, with any of these, at any time, you can either pause the card or close the card so it can't be used further. So this might be good if a merchant is like being difficult closing your auto subscription or something, they're refusing to stop it, you can just close the card and then they can't charge it anymore. Another nice thing about using these virtual cards is when you go to checkout or whatever, you can use any name and address. You don't have to use a real one. So if you're really privacy conscious, you can type in like a fake name and address. Obviously you wanna use common sense if you're gonna be signing up for a website that you know you're gonna be using for a long time, then maybe you do wanna use your real name. So if you contact support or something and they have to verify you, then you can actually verify the name you give, something like that. But it's still nice that you don't have to always give the real information if you wanna put in a pseudonym or whatever. Now, as for how the payments actually work, you actually do have to attach a bank account to the privacy.com account and then the charges will come directly out of your bank account and appear as a privacy.com charge. So this more acts like a virtual debit card as opposed to a credit card. And then you can attach more than one bank account if you want, so you can have multiple different payment sources for each different card. Now this website does assign some limitations depending on your activity, I guess. Like for example, there's like a daily spend limit you'll get and like a monthly spend limit. And I think you can request to have an increase in that, but I assume this depends on like your activity. If you have a history of like having bigger charges or whatever, they'll probably give you a higher limit. Also, they do apparently say there is some sort of limit on how many cards you can create total. I've created like 50 plus and haven't had any issues over the past couple of years. And they do, I think, say that you can request again to have more if you reach that limit. So it's probably not that big a deal. One thing that you might be concerned about and I was kind of questionable about is how chargebacks would work. So one of the benefits obviously of using a regular credit card is the credit card company 
will do chargebacks for you and if you dispute the charge. So you're kind of wondering, well, if this is coming directly out of your bank account, it's more like a debit card, how does chargebacks work? And they do actually have a dispute system. I've never had to do that, so I don't know how uh, more likely they are to side with the consumer or the merchant or whatever, but they do have that ability at least if you you know, get scammed by the merchant or something like that. A couple other features, they apparently do have a cash back system where you can get like 1% cash back on purchases. So this is good if you're used to using your credit card to get the rewards points or whatever. Though apparently this cash back program is invite only and I don't know how you get an invite. I guess you can email them support, I've never tried, but you have to type in some sort of code. So I don't think it's just available to everybody. And then finally, to make it easier to actually use the service, they do have a app for like iOS and on Android and a Chrome extension, which will autofill if you've already created a card for that particular website, or if you want to create a new card, it'll also let you do that pretty easily and see what cards you created for that site. So it's really convenient. I, again, I use this site all the time. I don't use it for every single website, but I do use it for a lot of ones, especially ones that have subscriptions and recurring charges or ones that I'm not super sure about how secure they are and that sort of thing. All right, so that was the first one, privacy.com. And the other website I'm gonna talk about is called Blur. And this is a service run by a company called Abine. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but whatever. And this has a few different features built in, a little bit more comprehensive than privacy.com, but I don't really use them all. And there is a free package or whatever and a paid uh, plan. Now, me personally, I really only use one of the features out of this whole service suite thing, and that is the masked emails, which is actually part of the free plan. So as you can imagine, this lets you create lots of unique email addresses that can either forward to your main email address or not. You can just have them kind of all the emails go in there and then you read the inbox through the website and then you don't have to use your main email on every single website if you don't want. So this can be good if you're signing up for a website that you know you're not gonna use in the future. You're just kind of signing up to see something about it that they require you to sign up to see. And you're like, well, I don't wanna give them my main email address. You can just give them like basically a throwaway email address. Or maybe if you're creating alternate accounts on like Reddit or something like that, then you can just create as many of these email accounts as you want and you'll be able to verify them because they are actually going somewhere. And then you don't have to, you know, create different variations of your main email address. Like you can create temporary emails with Gmail by putting like a plus sign. Not gonna get into that, but a lot of times websites block that. So this is another option. They also have other couple free features like password manager and like autofill. But for something like that, I'd probably just use a dedicated service like LastPass, but that's just me. As for the premium plan, there are a couple other features. First of which is masked credit cards. But I personally would not bother using this over privacy.com. First of all, privacy.com is free, whereas this is not to get the masked cards. And also, unless you pay an extra for the unlimited premium plan, then you get charged per credit card, masked card you create on here. So there's like a basic premium and then like an unlimited one that's like a hundred bucks a year. So I would not even bother with this if you're gonna just use it for the masked cards. Another neat one is they have a masked phone number service. So this basically has you put in your regular phone number then you, they give you like a a uh, temporary one that is assigned to you, but you can regenerate it, I think like once a month. But the thing with that is you only get one masked phone number at a time. So you can't create more than one and use more than one. So that would be really nice if you could, and then you could just like basically use it like emails, just give out a new phone number for every single website, disable them whenever you want. But I guess that would run into issues because phone numbers are managed by phone companies. There's like much more limited number of them. So I can understand why that would be, but still it's kind of annoying. So again, with Blur, the main feature I just use is the masked email one, which I believe is free. I think I tried paying for the premium thing. I didn't really use any of the features, so it's not that big a deal. So you at least have the options. So hopefully now with these two websites, you'll be able to go forward and keep all your information a little bit more safe. I think obviously the credit card thing is a big one. Your credit cards are a pain in the neck to replace and it's easy to do so now. If I happen to come across some other websites or services that I think are really worth using, of course, I'll make some other videos about it, but these are the two main ones that I think were worth mentioning at this point. But if you do have other suggestions, definitely let us know down in the comments and also be sure to check down there because maybe someone left a suggestion that I didn't talk about that is really good. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here you can just click on. And if you wanna subscribe, I make a couple new videos a week, so it should be worth it. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.